So one of my theses right now is that we are going to experience a, a revolution in healthcare, and this is where some of the business opportunities are uh, in the next 10 years that is going to make uh, antibiotics look like a Band-Aid. And, and, and what I mean by that uh, is, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from. Like, how are we going to get out of this? And I'm offering healthcare as one of them because there's a three areas of healthcare that I'm really focused on. Uh, you know, number one uh, is the cure for cancer. You, you, you know, the people I talk to in the biotech area believe that cancer is going to be cured in the next five to seven years. Now, imagine what this is, and I'm going to do a circle back here uh, in a second, uh, you know, with all this, but so you cure cancer. Okay, that's great. The second area is the next generation of an inflammatory drugs. So uh, you can take an ibuprofen or somebody my age uh, can take a shot of tequila or some bourbon. Uh, <laughs> that works the same way. Um, and then the third thing is Alzheimer's. Um, and, and so what's happening is that you solve those problems in the next 10 years. Guess what? You're going to get people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s living into their 80s and 90s. Now, that sounds like a bad thing, but it's really not because it provides a lot of business opportunities for younger people out there is really what it ends up doing. So I, I, I'm looking for ways, like I said, like in the 80s, the way we got out of the malaise of the 70s was the technology, the next generation, of the, the start of, of the technology boom. I'm thinking that the way we get out of this malaise, potential malaise that we're having, and again, you got to remember, we're still reopening our economy, getting back to normal, whatever that is. I think it's going to be the revolution in healthcare the next 10, 15 years. Well, we are America. That is, is a capitalist society and yep. we are <laughs> the, we are the forerunners of innovation. So if anyone's going to figure out a way, it really is the millennials and Gen Z. They're going to figure something out. I yeah. don't know if it's healthcare. Cause I th honestly, I think healthcare is way too corrupt um, as as an as an industry with the government and just as as powerful as they are, like take the take the vaccines for example, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the the latest batch of COVID vaccines, the Pfizer upped the price. It was originally thirty dollars. Actually, actually, I was going to ask you this or ask someone this, right? Because Pfizer is a publicly traded company, mm -hmm. right? They need they they made a hundred billion dollars. That's not an exaggeration mm -hmm. off the vaccine last year. Now they have quarterly earnings that they would have reached their shareholders and their and their whoever their board. How are they going to reach those numbers? It's going to be an inevitable dip, right? You'd think. Well, not really, because um, with the vaccine, the latest boosters who they're recommending for I think six months and up. Now I don't want to get into the debate of whether that's necessary right. or not. Just the economics of it. They upped the the, pr the price of the doses from the government from thirty dollars to one hundred and thirty dollars. Mm -hmm. So they're price gouging. Yep. To inflate their economy, the bubble. Yeah. So I don't know how healthcare is going to be innovative when you can't cut off that corruption, the price gouging for medication. Insulin is a big problem. People can't afford insulin. There's stories all over the country of the United States of people rationing insulin when the Canada and the UK or anywhere in Europe, it costs like $30. Here it costs like a thousand. I don't know if it's a thousand, but it's, you know, it's crazy. Right. So right. How, how do you fight that corruption? Yeah, I, I think, well, just to backtrack a second, uh, that's one of the things that we're doing at our shop. We run a biotech, small bio, you know, we look at these small biotech companies. And the reason why is because if you're a big pharma company, you don't want to spend a couple billion dollars developing the next generation of drugs. Right. So these small pharma companies uh, are, you know, doing phase one, phase two, and all of a sudden something looks promising and boom, they get bought out. So you're you're absolutely correct. So I, I think I think you hit the nail on the head though. That's that's the problem. There's no competition because they're gonna get bought out, right? And then well, it's, a, it's a monopoly. It, well, it, but to your point, so there was literally about five hundred billion dollars made. I mean, again, you, you go back and re rewrite history. This whole COVID thing is, uh, you know, and I don't want to get like too, uh, you, you know, back in history, but you know, the moon landing. You know, getting a man on the moon sparked, you know, incredible technological innovation, carbon fiber, et cetera, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm always looking for good that comes out of like, you know, kind of bad situations like, you know, forcing people to get vaccines, et cetera. The good that came out of it is we're leapfrogging in technology on the medical standpoint. Oh, I agree sure. wholeheartedly with you that, you know, these companies, you know, there's no question about it. 
Uh, it's a monopoly, but I do think as the population ages and votes, there's going to be a big pushback coming in healthcare in the next couple of years. Uh, it, it's already started, uh, and I think it's going to do nothing but accelerate because, again, there's nothing more visceral or you know inflammatory to somebody who's older saying you can't get that drug. And if you're you know a politician and you're doing something with a pharma company and people can't get a drug guess what you could end up losing you know they'll vote you out or they'll change the system now i'm not i i'm not you know pollyannish and think it's going to change overnight but yeah. i do think it takes a long the per- time. yeah i do think the perfect storm is kind of coming that you have a baby boom generation that's aging they're experiencing higher drug costs and they're pushing back going hey man no moss no moss uh, is it going to happen next week, next month, next year? Probably not. But I, I do think uh, that's not, you know, one of the top agenda items once we get past like everything else out there. Well, I hope so. But I'm I'm going to be the ever skeptic and the pessimist here because what do you buy with $100 billion? Well, yeah. you buy the government and you buy the media that covers you. Right. Like 70% of news, cable news advertisements are from, are from Big Pharma. So yeah. That's, yeah. you know, it's the, the corruption in this economy is just, it's too on the nose. It's too out in the open and it's too blatant.